How's it going? I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and today I'm going to show you some powerful palm muting guitar techniques. And when going through these techniques, we're going to be in a different tuning, a tuning called drop D tuning, which takes the low E string and tunes it down to a low D. So grab your tuner and tune your low E string down to a D, and you're going to tune it down to D, right? Don't tune it up to D. Tune it down to D, right? You're going to match it up with your D string. And if you don't have a tuner, sometimes the old school method would be just to play both of the strings and then match them up. So if I tune this back to E, and I want to tune it down to D, I'll just play the D string until they match up like that. The thing that makes drop D tuning so effective and powerful is that now you can play a power chord just by using the open top three strings on your guitar. So if you wanted to play an open D low power chord, you would literally just play the top three strings on your guitar open like this. And if you wanted to play power chords anywhere else on the neck, where you would normally make a power chord in standard tuning, right? Now let's, let's say I wanted to make a power chord right here on the third fret, right? Well, we're actually gonna have to move because we're tuning the, the, the low string, the low E string, right, is the only string that we've changed the tuning on. The rest of them are the same. So these two notes here in this power chord are gonna remain the same, but this one's gonna change here, the one that's on the lowest string. So we're gonna have to move it up to compensate just physically where the note lies, and now we can play the power chord like this. So you're literally just barring with your first finger on one fret. And there you have a meaty, powerful power chord. We're gonna be using this new way of playing power chords in the examples for each of these palm muting techniques. We're gonna take a riff that's pretty much similar, but what makes it different are the different palm muting techniques that we're gonna be going over today. So let's talk about proper palm muting palm placement. It's a lot of P's. Starting with the heel of our palm, right? To really get that perfect palm muting placement. I'm having too much fun with this. We're gonna have to rest our palm pretty much where the strings meet the bridge on your guitar, okay? So there's a certain sweet spot you wanna find. Of course, it's different, you know, depending on the type of bridge uh, or the type of guitar you have, you know, that, that has a different type of bridge. With like Les Paul style guitars, palm muting is uh, pretty straightforward, you know, but if you have like a guitar with like a floating tremolo or something like that, you'll wanna find, just find that sweet spot between the uh, where the strings are just kind of floating, right? And then where they meet the bridge. So you'll kind of notice, if I start here and I play a palm muted, just open low D power chord palm mute. Does a pretty good job. It mutes it, but it still lets it ring out. That's kind of what I like. And that kind of lends to the first palm muted technique that we're about to get into. But you notice if you start to go a little up the string, you start to lose that, that sustain. And it just almost just sounds like plinking, like you're just hitting strings on accident. And of course, if you bring it back the other way, then you're not palm muting at all because you're you're off of the bridge at that point. So you want to find that sweet spot. So like, there we go. Yeah. All right. So let's get into these techniques. The first one I like to call the crusher. Now you can pretty much tell right away why this is called the crusher. It's just this crushing downward motion, you know, where uh, when you're playing, especially like slow kind of like breakdowns and stuff like that, when you're doing those like just powerful downstrokes, you know, on, on those muted strings, it just crushes. So the key to this technique is in the downward motion, right? That downward force that I mentioned. So it only really works with down strokes. You kind of lose the crushing aspect of it when you throw in upstrokes, because you can't really, I don't know, when you're aiming your pick upwards and not downwards, it just doesn't have the same kind of effect. See what I mean? So down strokes are what really make the crusher crush, right? So what we do is we have our palm in that sweet spot of our guitar where we're getting the low chug right? And we just 
-hmm. We just kind of dig. Now, I'm playing all three of the top uh, three strings here. And I like to let them ring out just a bit, right? They're not completely muted and like muffled like that. There's a little bit of sustain. And I mean, I could just sit here with just the open low D power chord and just do that all day. Okay. <laughs> so again, it's all in the downstroke, right? So you keep your palm there and then your hand, your wrist is kind of doing this. You know, you can employ the the help of your picking hand to, uh, sorry, your fretting hand to mute the strings, you know, in between chugs. If you want to do those really tight chugs where there's no sustain, so you're not going, you're going. That's if you really want like with that tight low end that just like, you know, that really wallops, you know, if you want to use the crusher that way, then definitely want to mute with your uh, fretting hand. But in this example, as I said, we're doing uh, we're doing four power chords really, uh, starting on the seventh fret, eight, nine, ten, and uh, and it goes like this. So we start with a power chord on the seventh fret, right, with just barring with just one finger. We play that power chord, then we release it so that we can do those open D chugs. So there's going to be three three chugs right after that first power chord. Then we're going to play that power chord again and then play the next one, which is on the eighth fret. So there are a couple ways that you can play this. I personally like to use, you know, different fingers. I mean, but you technically could play all these power chords with just your first finger if you wanted to. Right. But we start with on seventh fret. And in between going from the seventh fret power chord to the eighth fret power chord, we're going to do one little chug. And that, that pretty much repeats as we go through all of these power chords, right? So we have the power chord, three chugs, power chord again, open one open chug, and then the next power chord. Let me repeat the process again. One, two, three. And with the last one, I like to do four. One, two, three, four. And then just hit that power chord again. And this is a very repeatable thing to play. So you can just go. You can repeat it as many times as you want just to get in that crushing vibe. And by the way, the tabs for all of these examples we're going to be covering in this video are in the description box. So be sure to download the reference material so you can check out the tab. All right, let's talk about technique number two. I like to call this one the helicopter. I call this one the helicopter because it to me just sounds like a helicopter. If you keep that rapid alternate picking palm muting open string thing going. <laughs> it sounds like a helicopter. So this one is approached way differently than the crusher, right? Where the crusher was more about downstroking, like powerful downward force. This one is about equal rapid fire alternate picking. So what you want to do is you want to have your palm in the proper muting position, right? Then you would just want to play the open D string, the open low D string we have here, right? And you want to alternate pick. So you want to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. What really gives that helicopter palm muting technique its name is that rapid fire picking, you know, like that's what gives it that sort of helicopter rotor kind of sound. That being said, if alternate picking is something you're still working on, you're still currently developing at this point in time in your guitar journey, and you're not quite ready to jump into playing it that fast, that's okay. What's really important, in fact, more important than the speed, I would say, is focusing on the evenness between the downstrokes and upstrokes. So you know how with the Crusher, it was all about that downward force? With the helicopter, it's got to be this equal up and down motion that actually requires, you know, much less movement. You know, with the Crusher, where we're, we're really digging in, with the helicopter, 
we don't want to use all that energy with every stroke because then our hand's just going to run out of energy. We're not going to be able to do it for very long. So you want to be able to pick the string rapidly, right? And uh, uh, in order to do that, you actually want to pick a little bit lighter than you would with the crusher. And you want to make sure they're even, right? The downstrokes and the upstrokes are of even force. You can start slow with this to work up that evenness, right? And then gradually build up speed. You can still do the helicopter at a slower tempo. So if we were to play the example, you know, slightly slower than full helicopter, it would sound like this. It's still really effective, even though it's not quite as fast as the original example. It still gives that helicopter kind of sound. It still sounds brutal. It still sounds powerful. Just make sure when you're practicing this alternate picking, you want to think about what your wrist and your fingers are doing in your picking hand, right? You, uh, because this is going to be a rapid, rapid fire picking technique, we want to make sure we're conserving as much energy as possible. So when you're picking, you don't want to involve your whole forearm. You know, you want to kind of narrow down the motion between your wrist and your fingers. You know, personally, I like to do both. I like to let both my wrist and my fingers kind of help out. But there's some guitar players where it's all wrist or some where it's all finger, and there's really no wrong answer. So kind of find what feels natural to you. But again, make sure it's something that's not spending all of your energy to where you can only do this for just a few seconds, then you start getting tired. Of course, if you're practicing it slow, that shouldn't happen. But if you're trying to go right into playing tempo, if you find yourself only able to do this, for like, you know, three to five seconds or something, and then you're like super tired, you know, you just slow down, focus on the evenness, right? Cut that time in half and just and just focus on that motion and then just gradually work your way up to speed with a metronome. And last but not least, we have my favorite palm muting guitar technique in the world, the gallop. It goes like this. <laughs> Man, there's nothing that sounds more like you're about to ride into battle and lay waste to your enemies than the gallop technique. I love this one because it really does create the image of riding a galloping horse. So let's break this technique down. What we do is it's a combination kind of, in a way, of the crusher and the helicopter, but it's laid out in a certain pattern that gives it that gallopy kind of vibe. So we start, it kind of starts with a crush. Right, we start with a downward, a downstroke, right? A powerful downstroke. And then we're gonna do what's called a triplet, which is just a one, two, three motion, really quick. So we have the downstroke, then the triplet. So the, the actual like picking uh, is gonna go like this. We're gonna go down and then down, up, down. And it's repeated. And then we essentially repeat the triplet motion over and over again. So that initial chug was just to kickstart it. Then we play the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three triplets, right? And then it just kind of keeps going. So you can think of that downward chug again as sort of what kicks off the gallop. So we're not going right into the gallop. We're doing a chug first, a crushing chug first, then the gallop. Okay. Now, I like to compromise in terms of which actual strings I'm using. So you know with the Crusher, we used the three top strings. And then with the Helicopter, it was just the top string. With the Gallop, I like to compromise and use the top two strings. So we get a little bit of that crushing element with that first chug, right? But uh, you know, at the same time, once we go into the Gallop, which is essentially like a momentary Helicopter, you know, because <laughs> it's like sort of rapid picking, but it's just in triplets. Um, we can keep that, you know, rapid picking motion without having to worry about covering three strings. So, uh, or if you want, another thing that you can do is when you do the gallop, you can just do the gallop on the low string. Uh, and then when you do the chug, you can do the chug on either the top two or the top three really is up to you. Like the cool thing is there's really no right or wrong way to play this. Just as long as you kind of follow these guidelines, the, uh, um, it's really about the sound that you're getting. If you feel like you're accomplishing that sound, by just playing the top string or playing the top two or the top three, as long as you're within the realm of the top three, right? 
then you're going to be, you know, it'll sound great. So, uh, so let's break down the actual example with the power chords. So we play the power chord on the seventh fret, right? Then we kick off the chug the, uh, that goes into the gallop. So we do power chord, then chug gallop. Okay. Now you notice in the last one, before we move on to the next power chord, it's just, we just do two instead of three. So we just do one, two instead of one, two, three. The reason is because the three that would normally be there is actually going to be played in the power chord, the next power chord. So we're doing. Okay. So it all kind of evens out when we're throwing in the power chords, like we're kind of like stabbing them in there in that example. So we're essentially keeping the gallop going, but instead of, at, you know, when we, uh, the power chords are almost like a substitute for what otherwise would be the third chug in the triplet, right? And another thing that makes the gallop so great is that you can play it really slow and really fast and it's just as effective. If you, if you were to play it slow, it just like, just makes you want to mosh. It's like slowing it down, I almost want to get into the crusher sort of zone, right? And then when you play it fast, then you get more towards the helicopter zone, right? So when you're practicing these different types of palm muting, just focus on the technique before you focus on speed, right? Get that motion down. When you're starting with the crusher, you know, get your whole body into it. That's the thing, you know, guitar players like Devin Townsend, for example, who I'm a huge fan of, my whole life been a huge fan of Devin. And when he plays like open, you know, just like low chugs that are just so heavy, like his, I swear, his, his, the fact that he's putting his whole body into it makes a difference in the sound than if he were to just sit there and then just kind of chug mechanically, you know, like, or with just his wrist or something. There's something to be said about like the way you play things, you know, so, so have fun with them, you know, take all of these techniques and, and just have a blast with them. Get really, you know, into it with the, with the crusher, you know, focus on that rapid, uh, that rapid fire picking with the helicopter, and then just get those really precise and just, you know, just killer sounding gallops and practice them at, at any tempo, you know, focus, if you got to uh, play it at a slower tempo just to get the techniques right, and then build your way up to, uh, up to speed with a metronome, absolutely do that. So uh, again, these techniques, I just want you to have fun with them, but make sure that you focus on, uh, on each of these techniques, because you can play, like I said, the same similar riff that I've been showing you this whole time, and then you can use those different techniques and it gives it a completely different sound. Or you can even play them all three together, which let's try that. Maybe that sounds cool too. Here we go. That was fun. Now, when you're practicing these techniques at home, you might run into some roadblocks. You know, maybe you're having a hard time getting the helicopter just quite fast enough or getting those triplets on the gallop. You know, they're just not getting them quite right. Whatever the case may be, there's something I need you to do. It's to click the link in the description and take a survey that's going to determine your number one guitar progress killer. OK, it's really important that you know what it is that's holding you back on guitar doesn't matter what level you're at. We find ourselves in ruts all the time. And generally what that is, is there's something that's holding us back and we just have no idea what it is. And because of that, we can go days, weeks, months, years even, where we, where we still are held back by that progress killer, and we're, we're, but we're still continuing to play guitar, but we're building bad habits that are not solving this problem. And we find ourselves hitting the same ceiling over and over again. And then you can reach a point in your life where you're so frustrated, you feel like you're never going to get any better at the guitar. That's because you haven't identified what that progress killer is so that you can break through it. So it's really important. Click here to take this survey. Okay. Click here to take it, find out exactly what it is so you can break through it right away and never have that problem.
And if you like this lesson, be sure to smack that subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon so you can stay up to date on all the lessons we got coming your way. Well, that does it for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.